Hi everyone, hope you're doing great. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started with using the Google Trends API. So first of all, this is not the official Google Trends API. Google, Google Trends has actually come out with its official API recently and has made it public, but only to a limited number of testers. So they are calling it the alpha mode. Uh, so there are some alpha testers who can get started with uh, using the Google Trends official API. But it's still in its early stages and it's kind of in its beta mode or alpha mode, uh, if you like it. So people are going to test it, developers mostly, and then they're going to give feedback whether or not the product is ready or if there are some changes that can be made, so on and so forth. The one that I'm showing you is actually using PyTrends, which is a Python package or a library. Just look it up and I will share the link to PyTrends in the description as well. So this is an unofficial API for Google Trends, which uses the similar kind of endpoints and does pretty much most of the things that you can see within the official uh, Google Trends UI. So I'm not going to show you the UI, but you already know what it does, right? So you can enter some keywords and you can get uh, over geography and over uh, across geographies, um, across different times, um, across different periods, I mean, um, what has been the development of interest how has the interest evolved over time for the geographies and you can see it by individually for the different keywords and you can also look at the related queries as well so pretty much this is what it's going to do so why even bother you might think if it can be done within the ui so the thing is that you can first of all get all the manual data and since you're fetching it directly through the api you can now embed it within your dashboard within any application of yours so what you see in front of yourself is actually a custom-made application uh, doing precisely that and uh, this is called google trends keyword explorer and it's basically fetching the data using google trends api this is something that you can embed within your application and create a custom dashboard. So this has been built using uh, something called a Streamlit, which is a, a, a tool building application. Uh, it is Python based and and I'm actually using examples from uh, programming language as well. So you can see that I've used keywords like Python, SQL, and QR, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Python, SQL and R. And these are some of the time frames like uh, five years till today. Uh, 12 months uh, from today, three months from today and one month from today. These are things that can be customized as well, but these are the options available here and you can also include a geo code here and you can leave it blank for worldwide. So these are the inputs very similar to what the inputs are within Google Trends UI. Now there is an advantage here, uh, apart from the fact that you can, you know, like I've already mentioned, you can pull the data from Google Trends API and you can actually embed it within your uh, application or your dashboard. You can actually have way more than five keywords here. So you can just add comma here. I mean, this is the app itself. The API itself allows you to fetch this data for multiple keywords at a time. Within the UI of Google Trends, you can only do it for five keywords at most at a time. Again, I'm not showing that. You can go ahead and verify it for yourself. So what is the advantage of this? That brings me to the use case. See, there are so many use cases of the Google Trends API. I cannot even try to be, even if I wanted to, um, you know, uh, be exhaustive about all the possible use cases. There are so many ways you can use things like this, but the way that I thought of that it can be used really um, in a very comprehensive way and in, in a way that can be beneficial to marketers in particular and CMOs and, and people taking strategic decisions is basically to create what I would call a category analysis or a category demand analysis uh, explorer really. So even though it, it, it is called here Google Trends Keyword Explorer, I could have easily named it, uh, renamed it as, or you can see it as a category demand analyzer. And what I mean by category demand, uh, you know, this actually arose out of a very specific situation that I arose recently for, um, you know, while looking at the data for a particular brand, I was seeing that there is a drop in performance recently. And this drop could have actually been attributed to marketing activities, you know, maybe the performance marketing team wasn't doing its job well, or maybe, you know, the, you know, the, the bidding strategy needed to be better, or it could have, you know, come to any such n number of conclusions. But the fact also remains that performance drop can also happen because of change in category demand. Uh, if there is a drop in category demand, which means that people are generally not looking for that category itself, individual products and individual brands within that category will also face uh, negative consequences because of a drop in that demand. So that's exactly something that can be done to 
Google Trends better because this gives you an aggregate score and aggregate index of interest over time. As you can see here, this is a graph that gets plotted. So for instance, this for these keywords here, imagine this can be anything, you know, if you are suppose, uh, uh, like I said, a, a marketer or maybe a key decision maker or even uh, an e-commerce business owner, you know, who is trying to research the next uh, viral product you might want to just take a look at how the interest has actually uh, trended over time and if there is any kind of seasonality here if it is peaking at certain moments you can see that these languages they have often peaked and and have had uh, you know dips in in interest at very similar points in time this is very interesting and this is something that can actually be analyzed as well so going back to that example that i spoke of this is something that I, you know, th that actually sort of motivated me to do this because we do have, if you, if you are familiar with Google Ads, for instance, or, or even SEO or any kind of marketing uh, in, in the digital space, you should know that there's something called a keyword planner, right? So the keyword planner gives you the different keywords, but it doesn't give you the data for time over time it gives you the data for instance the the top of the page high range uh, uh, bid and low range bid it gives you cpcs essentially it gives you also the competitiveness of that word you know metrics like that and whether or not it's been added to the google ads account if you're already running ads but what it doesn't give you is how it has varied over time it has a very small graph within the keyword planner embedded within it but that's honestly not enough to you know do any kind of analysis for the analysis you need you know granular data by time by date for instance so that is what this does google trends does give you that data of course even within the ui but it's limited in the sense that i've already spoken before at the start of the video so um, so yeah, definitely go, uh, you know, uh, go ahead and just take a, a look even within the Google Trends API, uh, you know, Google Trends UI and do this comparison yourself and you will understand what I mean. So going now forward uh, with what else is there, you can download the trend data from the way uh, this has been created. Now you can actually have a per keyword uh, trend dashboard. This will again be repeated for all the keywords that you add here. By the way, this might have some API call limits. So do, um, you know, mind that to keep in mind and what this will give you is then uh, bar charts for the top regions like how has the interest varied across different regions you can hover over them and you can get the actual value you can also uh, this is a nice little interactive chart by the way you can just scroll up and down and it will uh, change in in the uh, amount of variation it has between the different bars across the different bars then it also has related queries like i was saying even within the ui it's giving you the rising and the top and it has the corresponding indexed value the score uh, for each of these keywords uh, so these are all related keywords which can also be used for your demand uh, analysis as well like if you want to understand how the demand is varying then you can also take a look at this and then it also gives you a summary uh, like how it has varied in the last five years in terms of interest and how it has varied in the last year uh, and then you get a comparative picture like how it has varied so the difference uh, you know divided by the last five years average this gives you the actual change percentage between the last year and the total timeline of five years so this is very interesting and by the way this five year average has come because you have chosen five year here so if you choose something else this will give you a um a different change percentage this is a relative percentage and this is very useful because you can see what it also tells you that this is relatively stable and this has been this has been done using a benchmark value um which means that if it is within, within a certain threshold then it will be you know called relatively stable and you can look at the graph that uh, you know if you look at a f you know if you if you just ignore a few uh, extreme values here and there a few extreme variations more or less it has remained very stable right and you can see that there's been an in uh, an increase in interest around the same time some dips around the same time like i was saying before but more or less these have remained re relatively stable and you will see that that's the case even with sql and even with, uh, you know, and you get all the related queries, like I mentioned, and uh, here also it is relatively stable. And if you look at R, for instance, that also is actually telling you that it's relatively stable, but that's a predefined thing. So you can set your own thresholds. Of course, this is, this is by the way, not just part of the Python. This is something that has been added on through code. But the point here is that you will see that R is right, sitting right at the top. So if you were to take, suppose, a decision on uh, making, you know, courses, suppose you are a programmer and you have a lot of experience with programming or coding and you want to create courses uh, as a product, um, you can then decide, okay, what, uh, you know, what, what has the most interest. And it, it, it looks like that uh, Python is, is going down 
uh, in terms of its interest, which is which is very interesting. And you can see that um, you know R is relatively very stable. So this is all relative again, and R um, is and and in, even SQL is kind of going down uh, along with Python a little bit. So this might you know this might be because of various reasons. You never know. This could be because of AI. Maybe you know people are not looking into these languages so much as before. You know, there could be n number of reasons, but you could definitely think of many use cases out of this, right? I mean, you can plan your uh, product launches, you can plan your uh, campaign launches, marketing initiatives based on how the interest is growing. And if you think performance has dropped, if you see performance has dropped, sometimes this analysis is going to tell you that it's actually a category demand shift that probably would have caught, caused this. Or even if you see that there's an unusual in, you know, spike on, on the flip side. That also might be explained by a significant surge in category demand. So that will help you also eliminate what's called the selection bias. I've spoken about this before. That sometimes during very peak seasons, you tend to uh, marketers tend to like increase budgets or um, you know like push their marketing campaigns even more. What happens at the end of that is you know it looks like uh, hey we we spend so much more and we got so much more revenue and and profit and contribution margin and whatnot. But at the end of the day a lot of it that probably just happened anyway because of the increased demand so you can eliminate that selection bias by different kinds of methods maybe difference in difference but the point is it starts uh, through analysis of this uh, you know this causal effect by looking at uh, category demand this can be a very useful co confounding variable because of that reason so you can use it even in things like say marketing mix modeling um, so yeah, like I said, so with Google Keyword Planner, you can't use that. So this is why Google Trends is, is a better uh, option for that. So I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of the code that's going on behind it. So basically you take inputs from the user for the keywords, you take input for the geo, you take input, uh, you also uh, have, uh, you know, the, the buttons getting created here through, through code, um, you know, the basic interface, and then you just do the plot. And you also have the dashboard per keyword here, and it, you know, it, it gives you the trends, trend classification, um, which which is obviously very useful. You also have the classification logic here, which is by, by the way, a bounded logic. So basically it has to be less than and more than a certain value in order for, as you can see here, it has to be within a range uh, in order for it to be part of a particular classification uh, belonging to a particular group basically. And that just, you know, uh, varies. So you can have different thresholds for each of these classifications. Um, you know, you can also have say seasonal, you can have declining, you can have trending. Uh, and you can have stable, decreasing, so a lot of, and, and you can, I think there's also one called cyclical, so there you go. So for instance, if I just were to explain, so if it is say between uh, five and 20, you know, the average five year uh, growth, uh, five year interest, so, you know, and uh, if if in the last five years, in, in the last year rather, it is actually less than 15, less than equal to 15, you will call it cyclical. So that's how we would read it, and that kind of makes sense, right, because it's always, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, every five year, it tends to have uh, a cyclical pattern. So that's um, basically what, um, you know, what, what it really means. So it, it, it keeps on varying. You see the difference always in, in this range is, is, is 15. So it sort of keeps varying, um, you know, within that interest range. So this is how the different thresholds have been defined. You can also work on other kinds of thresholds as well and see which one uh, works best for you. But this is just to get you started on how you can start using the API. So hope this was useful. Um, again, uh, what I'll do is I'll leave a couple of links in the in the video description, uh, definitely for PyTrends as well. So you can give that a, uh, you know give that a shot if you're interested. Um, and that's pretty much it. So you know I'll probably create more enhanced versions of this app. Uh, with some more um, advanced ways of using Google Trends API. One uh, way you can already, you know, I can already see it, uh, that it can be used is, is sort of, in, you know, incorporating it within, you know, or, or rather sort of including it along with other data from other sources and, and carry out forecasting, right? So you can generate forecasting models, use it as a, as a covariate, as I've already mentioned, as a confounding variable, and that can essentially improve your understanding of how demand factor or the demand category or, or demand of your category is also impacting your overall uh, media and marketing mix. So um, if you like this video or if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments. 
if you have also been able to apply for the alpha testing for the new official API for Google Trends, do let me know um, if you have already taken it for a spin and how that went. If you have any comparative analysis with what you just saw here with uh, with PyTrends. Um, by the way, this is completely unrelated to PyTrends. It's it's absolutely not sponsored or anything. So I just you know found that and, and I found that repository to be publicly available and therefore I went ahead and used it. So yeah, that's pretty much. I'll uh, I'll just leave you guys to it. And if you have any questions, any remarks at all, just let me know in the comments. If you want other upgraded versions of this app as well, let me know if you have any suggestions along those lines. But um, so far, uh, that's it for now. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.